Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this tech guide video, I'm going to take a look at Highlander Druid. You may have seen some tweets around with number one legend Highlander Druid in them, but don't be fooled. When you look at the Druid decks in this game, Token Druid and Guardian Druid are both stronger decks than Highlander Druid. On the other hand, as an upside, Highlander Druid does have an above 50% win rate, so you can actually climb with this deck. And this is a playable deck, so if you happen to have the legendaries to use it, but it won't be long before at least the Enlightened and Zippers to Great are rotating our standard format, so if you want to play Highlander decks right now, it is a viable deck that you can play. Just realize that all the other Druid options are stronger than this one. Highlander Druid is still a ramp Druid deck, there's still a bunch of ramp in this deck and you want to get some mana, you want to get to some more expensive minions, but its swing terms come in a little bit different fashion than most of the other Druid decks. You have Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, of course, you have Isara Unleashed, then you have Elise the Enlightened, so you can make copies of Zephyrus, you can make copies of Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, you can even make copies of the Wonder Ghost Dragons that Alexstrasza has given you. And you also have Forest Warden Ohm to get your mana crystals back, so you use those tools to provide these swing turns, to provide turns where you get a lot of buddies on the board, instead of doing something like Guardian Animals or Clowns, for which you do not have the necessary consistency. Also, don't try to build this archetype armored Yashiraj. That plan is far inferior to just relying on the dragons and using Yogg-Saron. Between Yogg-Saron and Zephyrus, you have two cards that can really get you back from bad positions. And with Elise, you might even have more copies of those cards. So while the deck might not look like that much on the surface, you can actually do some really crazy turns with this. As for the mulligans with this deck, you're looking for your ramp cards. Overgrowth, Breath of Dreams, Wild Growth. There are three ramp cards in the deck, because Druid has access to three different ramp cards, and that gives you a modicum of consistency in finding some ramp. Other than the ramp cards, you want to keep Zephyrus the Great. Zephyrus is just a great card. You can use it early in the game, you can use it late in the game. The flexibility that it affords you is just something that you always want to have in your hand. Now, let's go take a look at Highland Druid in action. And if you enjoy this content, please like this video and check out my Twitch where I livestream Hearthstone. Yeah, Jax, I was just explaining why I didn't do that, because I thought that that wouldn't be enough. Like, you can... You can do things that are, like, somewhat over there. But if they're not enough, then it's meaningless to do them anyway. Sometimes you need to recognize that you need a better role in order to actually have a chance to win. Like, are you playing to win or are you just playing to trying to survive? I'm playing to win. That's the thing. An Enrage Warrior, eh? Let's get some mana crystals. Yeah, just as I, I saw the I saw the tweet as well. Two boom wranglers. I could kill them both with the Ghidra. I play Ghidra, and I play Iron Bark on the Ghidra. Or I can have eight mana next turn. But Ghidra into swipe doesn't work. I think it's the Ghidra Iron Bark play. That makes Ghidra big enough to kill both Bomb Wranglers. So I don't have to worry about infinite bombs. One damaged minion on the board, so not enough for them to get the Brute out there. Obviously there are other things that they can do. Do you think Rogue is getting nerfed in the next expert launch? Yes, they have said, Blizzard has said that they are going to nerf burst damage. So I expect that to mean stuff like Rogue, Rogue and possibly Lifesteal Demon Hunter. Maybe I'll just do the ramp now. That's intriguing too. I suppose we're just ramping for the time being. Still at 24 health. This should be an acceptable position. There could be like one Nitro Boost Poison in that deck. We'll find out soon enough. Sword Eater, fine, fine. I mean, I could do Omo into Swipe. I guess that's how we rolled here. Forest Warden Omo. I could just face tank it. I'll do Omo into Swipe. Get the Mana Crystals back. 
Then I can do nature studies, see a little bit about what I find. Soul of the forest. I guess I need to do that one. Emerald Explorer. Maybe for a Dreaming Drake. Resizing Pouch. Frost Scoundrel. Well, could have, couldn't play the Scoundrel actually. But yeah, Scoundrel can give me more spells. That seems fine. I got a Taunt minion out there. This one health minion is probably going to die. They should have some kind of skipper place or something. Or a barrow. Could also work out. Mm, randomly generated skippers are good skippers. Alright, that was that was quite phenomenal, I have to say. Not altogether expected. You don't expect them to generate those randomly, of course, but hey, happens. Suppose I need to kill them to prevent the warrior from doing doing evil things. And let's see what I can pick up from the scoundrel. A healing touch. Seems pretty decent. I can do that now. Heal up a little bit here. Okay. Well, they still have a lot of power left because the, all the copying effects and all the buff effects are still there. And both of the real skippers are still there. That was just a random skipper. But I'm in a fairly likely position to get this corrupted in the near future. And from there we might be able to get things done. That, on the other hand, was a terrible draw. Okay, well, this is one of those things that might end up losing me this game. There was an op option to play the 3 4 out there, but I didn't think that was going to do any good. But I would definitely, I would now need a good top deck. And good top decks are difficult to get when you're playing a Highlander deck, because obviously everything is a singleton. That's one of the reasons why this deck is so incredibly bad. Can I Solar Eclipse the Zepris card? That's kind of unlikely, isn't it? What could I pick up here? Just a Twisting Nether? I guess I will need to. I just need a Twisting Nether now. It does corrupt the Dreaming Drake. The problem is that I haven't seen the Charge Minions and I haven't seen any of the buffs yet. So if they find some of those buffs, they can just find lethal. Like now they're one off. So this is not a fun position to be in. Well, this one is ready. I suppose we're playing that. Let's see what happens. All right, Yog, be a good Yog. This is the best Yog. Okay. Full health, give it taunt. Freeze, life steal, seven locusts, three damage. So I want seven locusts and I want the tidal wave, right? Let's summon the locusts. Three damage, so that will go down to five. And then we do tidal wave. Then we do the fell bolt. And then we do Solar Eclipse into Serpent Shrine Portal. And we give that one taunt. I could have actually saved the Yog. Yeah, it was possible to save the Yog. But be that as it may, killing the Grom here and healing almost to full should put me in a fairly decent position regardless. We'll see how it goes. So that now draws the Ankar. It's a bunch of card draw this turn, isn't it? I believe it is. So we'll let some guests awaiting. Next one's going to cost more than that. Yes, it will. And then Ellie is 
This one's also going to cost more than that. It might not. It's pretty close. Cool. It didn't cost more. Oh well. That's still acceptable. They can get some... They can get some brutes out there now. They still have more skippers left too. We'll give this a try. I don't use a ray of frost yet. Let's see what happens. They still have an inner raid, they still have the card that gives divine shield. They have another They have another Bloodstone Mercenary left. They have two skippers left. Alright. Six cards in hand, so if I play Elise, I will get a copy of my entire hand. That sounds like a good plan to me. Let's do that. Need a hand, explorer? Let's get a copy of this hand. This one is uncorrupted, of course, at the moment, but it's not, not a disaster by any means. This one can hit into there. I can hero power that one down. Still I have three mana. Do I play it? I might just play another Dreaming Drake. They have the skippers. They don't have a ton of small minions there though. So I suppose this should be okay. I have up to four freeze effects. They have one one blood zone mercenary, so they can do double Gorkron. They don't run two Cochrans in this deck, they run one Cochran and one Grom, or they only run one Cochran. I was a little bit surprised by the Grom, I suppose, already, but... Alright. Another day, another game with joke deck against joke decks. But this one is no joke. They are playing, unless they're playing the Mosaki OTK. And even in the case of Mosaki OTK, they might actually be able to kill me. That is completely within the realm of possibilities. Avenging Rat was lethal. Oh, there was an Avenging Rat lethal. Ah, but Cypress doesn't give me that because the 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 minions were, that hit the rogue to six weren't there yet. R Cypress doesn't know that they're coming. From Cypress's point of view, the hero had twelve health, so Cypress wouldn't give me the give me the Avenging Rat. Is Tomu important? It allows for some pretty big swing turns. I mean, it definitely would not have given me that. Because there was no lethal from Zeprys' point of view. Do I check what sort of AoE capabilities they have at the moment? That's definitely an option. Let's shoot that with four Bs and see what happens. That was the option to ramp as well. Just a little interested to see whether they now have some tool to protect that arcane explosion. Or the arcane explosion or firebrand or something. Because if they don't, then these one ones might actually get to do some work. Okay, now they're unlikely to get to do much work. Hmm, one survived. That's not bad. So many things that I would like to do, like ramping up. But I find myself a little low on the mana. What if I do the Lightning Bloom? Lightning Bloom, Wild Growth, Iron Bark, Discus Tree. I think we're just going in that one over there, and I'll hit into that one a little. Let's see what happens next. It's important to try to limit the spell damage that they have available. But I didn't feel comfortable using Zepris yet. There might still be better, better moments to use Zepris. Perhaps I should have originally ramped. 
Oh, they use a frost bolt like that. That's a major surprise to me, but not an unhappy one at all. Quite the contrary, very happy surprise. I could do Ghidra Wild Growth next turn. I think I'll just use this to kill that spell damage minion. Got rid of a couple of spell damage minions, but there's still plenty more to come, especially the Phoenixes. Because the Phoenixes can set up for some OTKs and stuff. Or at least turns where a lot of damage is going to come true. Here comes Phoenix number one. That was not the discovered spell damage minion, so that's a piece of good news, I suppose. That's fine. Completely fine. And this keeps being fine. So Ghidra Wild Growth, I believe. Could be Ghidra Bulk Beam. Then I don't get to ramp. I would love to ramp a little. Saves the Bulk Beam for next turn. Actually, I can use the Bulk Beam this turn as well. Is that something I want to do? Yeah, why not? Bulk Beam that one. Ghidra Gills these. I guess I am going to kill that one now. Does give them an RK missiles, but let's do that. Because they probably want to do something about this Ghidra. Although they don't necessarily have to. They have the option to not do anything about it yet. I just felt that it was probable that they would spend some resources here. And that then again weakens the Phoenix. Not have very little that I can do. Hmm. That's awkward. Would I do Omo, Zepris? I don't have any of those big cards here. Just the Zepris. But I might need the Zepris after the Phoenix. I need to clean up after the Phoenix, right? I'll need to clean up after the Phoenix. I just wanted a minion on this board, because there's a lot of potential random damage. So I just wanted the Omo out there, because the Omo needs to be killed. So some resources have to be spent. And I want them to spend some resources now to kill that Omu. I've seen one Frostbolt, one RK missiles from the deck. One of each still remains. There might be Chandis or something as well. But they will kill the Omu. And because of the spell burst effect and the threat that it generates. And I want that to happen. I want them to spend resources to kill that. Worst case scenario, they do it with an arcane explosion. Best case scenario, they do something like this. Well, that's a convenient card. Let's use that one. What sort of card do I need from the Zepris? Anything with two mana that does enough here? I don't think there is, right? I probably want a little more. Oh, Nova seems okay. I could do double hole in over. That's acceptable too. Let's just double hole in over the board away. That heals me for four. Removes the apprentice, removes the phoenix. I'm overloaded by four, but it's alright. I'm at 25 health. I have a Zepris on the board. They do run Gen D's. Which was a minor surprise. You don't often see Jandis in these decks nowadays. But sometimes. 
Ah, oh, I can't play the Dragon Queen. How inconvenient. Could have spent Zephyrus to kill this board. They still have more spell damage remaining. They still have Ross. I think Zephyrus is fine. Oh, the Shadow Madness is fine. Yes, like this. But they will have Ross and some spell damage, which will kill these minions. Wand Thieves, okay. Some Something from there. And what does that give them? Not bad. Not bad at all. Seems a little weak from my perspective. Just seems a little weak. don't want them to have that one around. Do I even need the Circus Amalgam? I don't think I need it. I think the Storm was fine here. Let's put more pressure on this board. So they have one Frostbolt, one Fireball remaining. And then they have Ross. And that's pretty much what they've got. Well, that doesn't do much. I should have used Solar Eclipse on that. Sorry, that was my bad. I oh, doesn't want to hit them in the face here. Two cards in their hand. It's kind of hard to see what would be the out. That definitely is not the out, right? Well, it does draw three spells. Well, one spell, the only spell that's remaining. So that other card is a frost bolt, but it just yeah. would be able to push in so much damage that I can't do anything unless I kill them first, of course. And the main way to kill them is to have big minions. I have a few. It might work out, but it could be aggro, could be souls. I feel OTK just seems like the most likely one. And the way to kill them is to have pressure. Let's study a little. So I will have to fit us Lightning Bloom so that I can get Dragon Queen out earlier. Maybe it's so I will have to fit us. That's possible. Next turn we're doing a wild growth. Yep, this looks like the lifesteal OTK. So, pressure is the key. I would need to find pressure in order to win this. If this was a guardian droid, I would be in a much better position because I would be able to get that pressure on much more consistent bases. Because I'm playing this kind of a joke deck, then it's more difficult. Nothing useful I can pick up from Zephyrus here, I believe. <laughs> Barry Barrett, do you have a budget the corset article? Thanks! I had a lot of fun writing it. Got to work on, work on some of the good stuff. Okay, so they have some discounts. I could get a reasonable sized Ghidra, but that would cost me my coin. Is it worth it just to get a 4 7 out there? Well, it does have Wind Fury. I'll give it a try. Let's see how it goes. This just like... 7 health isn't that much. 7 health is something that this deck can still handle. 
I'm trying to see if I can force them to use something on it, but that's kind of unlikely. Next turn blessing. Yeah, having Zippers in hand definitely contributes to what I believe can be accomplished. There's sometimes one copy of Consume Magic in that deck though. But it's often better to err on the side of pressure than to err on the side of doing nothing. We got rid of one more arg. It's not bad. It's not the greatest, but it's not bad. The problem is that I don't really have follow-up. I don't think I want to play the Tepris yet. So this means that without Skull of Gurda and Discounts, their maximum damage now became 24. But obviously, Skull of Gulda and Discounts are a thing. And I'm already down to 24 as well. So there's that. Some ramp. I do enjoy ramping. Why not? Let's ramp. I am down to 24, so I am within the lethal reach even without any discounts at the moment. And then we have that Skull of Gul'dan. Which can do tremendous things. Life and hope are worth fighting for. First spell each turn goes zero. Well, yeah, sure. And do that. Starfire seems like an appropriate spell. Not for this turn, of course, this turn is survival of the fittest. But they might have lethal now. You need to pressure that deck. If you don't pressure them, they can just deal like 160 damage or something. So pressuring them is the path to potentially winning. Because they're unlikely to be able to kill these minions. That deck is bad at killing big minions. They have 8 mana. They have 3 Skull of Gul'dan discounted cards, which could be enough to kill me. They use the Fell Screamer discount, which means that without the Skull of Gul'dan discounts, they need 10 mana to deal 24 damage. And I have already seen them spend one more Arc Artificer. But 3 Skull of Gul'dan discounted cards gives them the possibility to deal like 90 damage. Right here, right now. Turns out that they didn't have that. In which case, Magic I believe it's time to get a Wind Fury. My suggestion is Wind Fury. We we. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.